G'day everyone, well today we've got the Sherco SE 250R. Now this is Chad Talbot's personal test bike. He's the suspension mechanic for the Sherco race team, so he uses this bike for testing products and for services on the bike, just so he knows the ins and outs of the suspension, that when he goes out riding, he knows that the racers have got the best equipment underneath them. So this is the 2021 SE 250R. Now, let me go through some of the features on this bike. It's got a new electric power valve, a new counterbalancer to significantly reduce the engine vibration, a new gearbox with new ratios and lighter in weight. The total engine has been reduced by a massive 1.2 kilos, a new ignition for better and stronger spark with a GET system. The graphics on this bike are in-moulded with Sherco Racing Graphics Kit. It has a WR Explorer fork with preload adjustments. A WR rear shock absorber comes with black frame protectors, black XL rims and black grips. It also has a new brake spring for quicker return. Now, as I said, this is Chad's personal bike that he uses for testing. So let me take you through some of the parts that he's put on the bike so far. He's got some X-Trig rocks clamps. It's got a K-Tech Explorer kit. Both of the legs have rebound and compression. It's more like a traditional open chamber fork design now. MX Tech triple adjuster rear shock that adds adjustment for the high and low speed and ultra low speed. He's put some radiator braces on it from Force Accessories. He's fitted a factory fan to it and a TM Design chain guide. Okay, so I've had this bike for about two or three weeks now and I've been going out riding around in it. I've had a big long ride, 70 odd k's, nearly 80 k's in single trail in it, up and down hills, through some actual special tests as well, and the bike performed amazing. Even though it's a 250 and I'm used to a 300, it really does feel like a 300. Pretty slippery today. You don't have to short shift like you normally do with a 250 two-stroke. You can actually leave this in third gear because it's got heaps of bottom end torque. Third gear will lug you everywhere you want to go. Actually up and down hills, you can actually start off in third and fourth gear. That's how much torque this bike has, it's amazing. I really like the way this bike turned. I must say I was a little bit skeptical because if you turn the bars, it doesn't have a very big turning sort of circumference on the bars and it's got some stoppers that you can't wind in any further because the forks then hit the radiator guard. So I thought, geez, it's not going to turn very well, but it does actually turn quite sharp and it turns smoothly as well. Now let's talk about the suspension. We know that this is Chad's bike, so he's probably done some very special work to it. He tells me it's just off the shelf stuff, but man, this bike is super plush. With that K-Tech front fork, does make a massive difference. I don't know what it's like stock, but I know that this fork is so good. It's really predictable. It doesn't bounce off rocks. It's not stiff. It's really plush, but it's not plush to a point where it's falling through the, uh, the stroke when you're coming to corners. And we did a lot of single trail with a few ruts where it sat in the rut perfectly. It's amazing. That front fork is very, very nice to ride with. And the rear end as well, it doesn't jump. It doesn't kick. It doesn't do anything. It sort of sits nice and tight. If you grab the bike with your legs, it goes where you want it to go. Most bikes, you know, when you get them from a factory, you normally change handlebars, foot pegs, grips, that sort of thing. Not with this bike. The handlebar bend on this bike suits me down to the ground. It's a flatter bend, which I really like. The grips, probably a little bit big for me. I like a thinner grip from Pro Taper, but you know, for someone that's got bigger hands than me, and I've only got small hands, I'm sure it's, they'll be perfect and they're great factory grips that come out, they're nice and soft, so normally that's the first thing you change in a bike. I don't think you need to do that on this bike. Piper muffler on this bike, I don't think you need to change that either. It's fine. Being able to move around on the bike was very easy. It's got a nice flat seat, a comfortable seat, a seat that you can sit in for probably four or five hours of the day, not a problem whatsoever. Riding the bike, nice and smooth. Yes, it can be aggressive if you want it to be, but I rode it with the map on the less aggressive side and found that that was more than enough for me to get around the trails. The map switch on this bike does work very well though. It has a big difference from going from sort of a, a dull bike to a very, very lively bike once you switch it up into the more aggressive switch. Now, not saying that you can't hold it, it's just that it's a big difference between the two switches, which is what you want. Some switches, 
you switch from sort of the less aggressive to the aggressive and you don't notice a difference. This one, you do notice a difference and it is a great difference if you, one, want to go up a hill, slip it into the dolly and it just gets you and tractor pulls you up the hill, not a problem. If you want to get going, say on some singles trail and you can f flip it on the fly as well, which is a great thing. So as you're riding, switch it either way and you can get going. It's a good thing to have. The one thing about this bike that uh, shocked me a little bit is it's very quiet. It's got a long muffler on it and uh, it makes it a quiet two-stroke, which I don't mind out in the bush. You know, it's not super quiet, that's for sure. You know, when you open it up, that two-stroke bark is really there. But as you're sitting in the car park and, and it's on idle or you give it a little bit of a rev, it's not tinny. It's got a, a really nice note to it and I like that. Now the counterbalance that they've introduced for the 21 model is great. You really don't notice any vibration through the bars. It's quite a smooth ride for a two-stroke. I didn't notice any vibration really. It's not noticeable that there isn't vibration or there is. And the big thing is, if you notice there is on a two-stroke, then there's a lot of vibration. This one, I didn't notice anything. It's very smooth. Now let's move to the brakes. They've got Brimbo brakes on them, front and rear. Now they're strong brakes, but they're progressive brakes, which is really good. The harder you pull, obviously, the quicker they're going to stop, but they are nice, strong brakes, which is great for in the bush, because you do have some moments where, especially I've been riding a lot of single trail lately, and once you get off that single trail, you want to be able to stop, because normally there's things in front of you that you don't want to be hitting. Now the engine on this bike. As I pointed out before, with the map switch, it's got a super aggressive engine if you want it to be, or it's got a very nice low end engine. Now I rode around with it on the, I call it the doughier side of the switch, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was fine. I just rode around third gear, second gear, nice and easy, pulled me around everywhere. The bottom end on this bike is what surprised me the most for a 250. There's so much torque on bottom end. Getting up hills is such a breeze on this bike. It has real low end torque, so you don't lose any power at all, yet you're still able to climb up the hill thinking that it's gonna actually stop, but it doesn't. It just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling. It's a really good bike to ride if uh, you wanted to do, say, some extreme trails, or you've got trails where you've got a lot of hills and hill climbs, and I think you'll find that this bottom end and this torque in the bike will certainly get you up those hills. And coming down, as I said, those brakes, they stop you coming down, not a problem. And my overall impression of the Shirko SE250R Chad Talbot edition, mind you, is Chad's done a wonderful job of the suspension. The suspension is a real standout on this bike. The engine on this bike for a 250, I really liked. As I said, you don't need to short shift it, which I find fantastic for a 250. It's more like a 300, and it's where I'm more comfortable with riding in the bush on a two-stroke. It's got plenty of bottom end, it turns really well, it brakes well, it's easy to move around on, and I don't think you need to change any parts when you buy this bike, so that's a big plus too. Now this bike comes carbureted. It's not fuel injected, but I honestly don't think we need fuel injection in Australia. Once you get your carby tuned, that's it, it's done. And I honestly think once you've tuned your carby, I think it's got a better bottom end than fuel injected bikes. I really think that you get a bit more grunt through the bottom and you get a bit more torque when you've got a properly jetted carby. So don't be scared that this has got a carby because uh, I don't think we really need them in Australia. Just get it jetted right and you won't have a problem. So there you go. My first time on a Sherco two-stroke. I think that it was a very good machine. It's something if you're in the land of looking at two-strokes, if you know someone that's got one, try and get on and have a ride. See if you can get a ride at your local dealer, but it's well worth throwing a leg over one of these and checking it out, because I enjoyed the last two weeks riding around in the bush here. Very good single trail bike.